So why is your ball python not eating? I can't tell you that. But I can tell you why mine are not eating. So this girl here is my lightning pied female who has uh, you know, been locking up here with my lightning pied male. And as you can see, she is going through the process of ovulating. She has a big, huge, extremely huge swollen stomach. Um, and this is good, so hopefully she doesn't reabsorb these. And she should be shedding here in a few short weeks, and I should have eggs from her hopefully very soon, within the next little over a month. So she's not eating because she is, in, in, in lack of a better word, uh, almost pregnant. So that's why this female isn't eating. Now, her boyfriend isn't eating because sometimes males go off of food while you're breeding them, which is why it's important to have uh, fat, happy, healthy males before you start the breeding process with them. If you start them too young, then if they're underweight and they stop eating, then you're going to have an unhealthy snake and he's probably not going to make it through the breeding season as, season as it is. So make sure your males are big and healthy and a good weight when you do start breeding them. Now my lavender albino het pied female here is just a picky eater. Um, when I first got her, she was eating rats weekly. I bought her as a picky eater, kind of like a project, like if she pans out, fantastic. If not, then, you know, have a cool looking snake. Um, for some reason, about six to eight months ago, she just decided to stop eating. Eventually, I got her to eat a live mouse. Uh, I went from frozen thawed rats to live rats to live mice, and that's the only thing she's eating now if she's even eating those on a weekly basis. So uh, she may never put on enough weight to breed, which is okay. She's a really neat snake to show people, um, but she's just a straight up picky eater and that's why she doesn't eat. I can't figure out anything else. She has, I've, I've switched from coconut substrate to paper substrate. She has hides in there. Um, I switched her around my rack system. She's just a straight picky eater. And she was the same way for the person who owned her previously. So sometimes you can just have a picky eater. Now my pastel inchy clown female here sort of went through the same process as the lav had pied, but she's actually eating consistently. She was eating rat live rats for me when I first got her. Um, I think I got her last summer, you know, summer of 2021. And then she went off food for a while, um, just decided to stop eating. Um, I did get her to start eating live mice, and she'll usually eat two or three each week. Unfortunately, if you're only eating two to three mice a week, it's really not enough food to get you, uh, you know, big and bulky, get ready for breeding season. Um, she's over a thousand grams, but it's going to be hard to kind of pack on pounds just eating that much. So she was a good eater and became a picky eater, but at least she's still eating live mice. Sometimes the snakes like to switch the type of prey that they're eating. And unfortunately, she went from rats to mice. Um, but sometimes that's another reason why your snake isn't eating. Now this girl is eating, but it's not very common because she's in shed. A lot of the times your snake isn't going to eat if they're going in shed. As you can see, she's an OD pied. She's very dull. You're not going to be able to see it because she's not going to sit here. Her eyes are like that kind of milky blue. Um, and a lot of the times your snakes aren't going to eat while they're in shed. Even if it's a little bit before shed or right after they shed, sometimes they just will not eat. They just want to kind of be left alone. So if you think your snake is getting ready to shed or in shed or just shed, that could be why they're not eating. My super inchy ghost female here had a nice uh, small clutch for me last year, first year. Hates being handled. She hates when I go in her tub. She is, I would say, the runner of my uh, collection here, um, which is unfortunate because she's honestly probably one of the coolest ones I have, the coolest looking ones I have. But she gets stressed out very easily. Uh, she doesn't like when I open her tub too often. She doesn't like when I pick her up. And sometimes, if your snake is stressed out, that can put them off of food as well. So make sure that if your snake has stopped eating just for no random reason, make sure that their habitat is set up properly, make sure they have the proper temperatures, proper humidity, the right size hides and the right amount of hides. Um, and if they've stopped eating for seemingly no reason, stop handling them, leave them alone, don't touch them for a week, a few days at least, try to feed them again, but don't be don't hover over them, don't be a helicopter parent because sometimes that can actually make it more stressful for them. Leave them alone, let them be a snake and come back to them a few days to a week and try again. But as you can see, she's already sort of like, hey, get off, get off of me. So I'm gonna get her back in her tub. 
do you have a new snake? Sometimes your new snakes, they're getting, they're, you have in a completely different environment, different setup. Uh, you know, maybe you went from a nice secure tub to a big open aquarium. Uh, is your aquarium too big? Do you not have enough hides? Is it not the right temperature? Uh, which goes back to my other points. But if you have a new snake and it's not eating for you, I would talk to who you got it from and see how they were set up previously. Um, I have actually done that before with some snakes that I got and that didn't start eating right away. And I made some changes to make them feel a little more comfortable and I actually did get them back on food. The other part of this kind of point is, have you switched something recently in their environment? I was kind of getting sick of dealing with coconut husk a couple months back. So I was like, well, I'll just try like a thicker cardstock paper to see if that works well. And I would say half of my snakes kind of went off food at that point. Um, I reintroduced coconut husk here in the last several weeks and almost immediately of the half of those snakes that stopped eating, I would say, uh, you know, half of them started eating immediately. So sometimes when you've made a change in your snake's environment, that can cause them to stop eating. So if they don't eat for a few weeks, maybe try to put things back to the way they were. Um, you know, this, as you can see, this pastel pie girl here does not have any issues with eating at all, but I just want to use her as an example and show her off because she, I, haven't really, I don't think I've shown her on this channel. I got her last year and she was just literally packing on the pounds. Is your snake sick? Um, this girl's not sick. She's a pretty little OD head pied. I believe she was originally produced by Ozzy, but I bought her kind of second hand. Um, is, is your snake sick? Is it showing any symptoms of being sick? Is it sneezing? Can you hear it? You know, if you kind of put your head up to it, is it? Can you hear it? Can you hear it breathing? Can you hear like any any kind of rustling or kind of whistling or anything like that? Is your snake uh, producing excess mucus out of its mouth? Um, is it sick? I mean, that, that can be a very big reason why. If it's a new snake, um, even if it's a month to two months old, some things uh, can take that long to show up or to flare up. Um, I know nidovirus is a huge issue right now with uh, the ball python world, and it can go unseen for quite a while between flare-ups. Um, and it may not affect the snake at first, but you could have that snake for three, four, five months and then all of a sudden it flares up out of nowhere. Um, so I would probably get new snakes tested. I actually do that here. Um, when I get them in, I usually buy snakes in like groups, um, not from the same breeder, but I'll get them in so that I'm not sending away. It's like 50 bucks to send in. Um, I usually go to RAL Labs. It's like 50 bucks to ship something down there. Um, it's like 25 bucks per test, I think, just if you do a night of virus. So I usually get snakes in two or three or four at a time, and then I'll just swab those four snakes and send them down and get them all um, tested to see how we're doing. Once is usually good. If you get a negative, you should be okay. Um, when I talk to them, they said they recommend usually to test every 30, 60, or 90 days because they will show negative even if um, they do have the virus because if it's not shedding the virus, kind of like coronavirus works, then you're not gonna get a positive test. So uh, your snake could be sick if it's not eating. I've honestly found that I've had the best luck uh, raising snakes is if I buy them as hatchlings. Um, this one I hatched, this one I bought from Ozzy. I've had no issues transitioning these from live rodents to frozen thawed rodents. They both, um, she started off eating live mice and she has taking frozen thawed wean rats with no issue at this point in her life every week. Same thing with him when I got him from Ozzy, I think he was live mice, and I transitioned him to frozen thawed within a few weeks. Um, and that's a kind of a big thing. Sometimes when you get these older snakes, if they're in the habit of eating something in particular, which is why I never buy something that's being uh, fed uh, ASFs, um, which is African softwood rats, because I can't get a, a good supply of them locally and I don't breed them. Um, I don't want to breed them either. I breed mice and rats. I don't need a third rodent to breed here. So I don't buy anything that feeds, it, feeds on ASFs because um, they usually don't switch back over. You can try to get some things to switch from mice to rats, but I had a snake or two that I bought that only took mice. Um, 
that I could not switch over to rats. I actually ended up uh, selling it back, selling it to somebody because I couldn't deal with it just taking mice because it's hard to put on weight. You can, a, a mouser is okay for a male because the males don't get very big, but you'll never get a female up to size just eating mice unless they're eating 10 for you every week. So <clears throat> I would try the best you can if you can find healthy hatchlings to try to get your snakes as hatchlings because it's the easiest way I think to get your snakes feeding healthy and consistently and on the types of food that you want. Now they also get used used to and accustomed to the way you have their setup. Um, I feel like they're kind of more uh, adaptable to the environments at that point. Um, I've had probably a small portion of the adults that I've purchased just come into my collection and just run. Uh, you hit the ground running in terms of just adapting to what's going on here. A lot of them t have like a grace period where they just aren't comfortable for a few weeks to a month. Some of them don't like my tubs. Some of them don't like what I'm feeding them. Um, you know, that, that lavender albino just will not, you know, be happy with anything. So I think that's just the individual snake because she's been to two different places now and tried a bunch of different things. She still doesn't like food. So I think when you get them young and you're able to kind of train them to how you want them to react to things and what you want to feed them and how you want them to uh, you know, be set up in their environments is probably the best way to have success. But you also have to make sure that everything is right for them. Temperatures, hides, uh, humidity, not overhandling it. I mean, but these guys I usually take out once a week, maybe twice, you know, if I, you know, open their tubs when I'm feeding them, you know, I check them for poop, uh, you know, every day to clean out their tubs. But I don't handle them a lot. You can see how comfortable they are. I mean, these guys are very easy to handle and keep, um, you know, happy. So these guys, these guys are actually gonna eat here shortly. So try to get them young. Uh, they don't have years of experiences of possibly neglect, um, you know, weird feeding habits that the previous owner had. It's easier to train them into kind of what you want them to be and react to, you know, the way you uh, are as a caretaker. So those are a bunch of reasons uh, why your snakes may not be eating. Unfortunately, I can't tell you why your snake isn't eating, but hopefully those reasons help. You really need to be in tune with the animal you have to figure out what's going on with it and why it's not eating. But hopefully the tips that I gave you in this video help. So thank you for stopping by and we'll see you next time.